What are the differences between Old and New Testament prophets? And how do prophets receive revelation? Last time, we had a look at prophetic words that have the power to change a person's destiny and future, as well as bring transformation in a city and a nation. Ministries are birthed from prophetic words and people receive physical and emotional healing. Prophecy can even bring unbelievers to salvation in Christ. Today, we will have a look at a few differences between the Old and New Testament prophets and the way that they received their revelation. But let's start with the differences between a seer and a prophet and how they received their revelation. In 1 Chronicles 29, 29, it says, As for the events of King David's reign, from beginning to end, they are written in the records of Samuel the seer, the records of Nathan the prophet, and the records of Gad the seer. Now, generally, prophets were either called a Nabi or a Nabi, or a seer in the Old Testament. And a Nabi prophet such as Abraham, Moses, and Aaron would hear and speak, or they would be the mouthpiece for God. Now, words would seemingly just flow forth or bubble forth like a fountain. And seers were called raha or a chosen, which meant to gaze. Now, if you are a seer, you will experience visual revelation. Seers such as Ezekiel, Elisha, and Gad were more visionary than receiving hearing input. And seers have dreams and visions. They see angels and demons, lights and colors. Now, prophets spot or identify where God is at work in people's lives, and then they speak life and growth into that bad situation. But prophets also need to wait for the perfect moment to prophesy, which is God's perfect timing. Under the new dispensation, prophetic ministry is quite different for prophets to what it was in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, prophets brought a message to Israel and the nations. Corporate focus placed an emphasis on which Israel or Judah continued to suffer for the sins of their fathers or idol worship or backsliding, just to mention a few. The New Testament prophets and prophetic people focus mainly on personal prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, which says, But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Now, there is more to prophecy than only personal prophecies. And so prophecy should give solution to our modern day problems. But more on that at a later stage. Examples of prophetic ministries can be found in the New Testament. For example, have a look at Acts 10 and 11, where Peter falls into a trance on a rooftop and he sees a vision of a sheet containing forbidden animals. He hears the audible voice of God saying to him, rise and eat. The fruit from this vision was that salvation was for the Gentiles. In Acts 11, 28, it is written, then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine in the land. The fruit of this prophecy was a collection and preparation for what was to come during the famine. Even the Apostle Paul receives a warning through the Spirit not to go to Jerusalem in Acts 21 verse 4. As you can see, prophecy is used in many different instances, for example, to speak life or to warn or to prepare and to bring transformation. And we are all called to ministry to further the kingdom of God. So start today by prophesying regularly to sharpen and develop your gift. If you have enjoyed the message today, Remember to subscribe to the channel to receive notification of future posts. If this helped you at all, remember to share the video with a friend. Until next time, keep prophesying. Be blessed.